2020 is finally over. We're going to have a compilation of all the bugs that destroyed the game. This barely even scratches the surface. Ugh. Mmm, it's an orange juice. For the longest time, I think for a solid two weeks or even a month, the clone skeleton barrels wouldn't pop by itself. It would have to take damage. So if you pulled it with a building, it wouldn't pop. Princess had to pop it right there. And this was so abusable on ladder and everything else. Everyone was complaining about this. Next up, this one's a bit of a more weird one. That's... I've never even seen this one myself. But credit to Milo for finding all of these bugs and glitches and helping me compile it and source everything. That King Tower it does nothing, but it looks like it's just aesthetic. This next one shook the world. He discovered how to glitch out the royal recruits it says invalid position because he ended up destroying the cannon cart there but to get to the cannon cart there you have to lightning it you have to really think of a series of events to make these happen so you can kind of see right here he's setting up he lightning the cannon cart and he put down the cannon right at the same time as the royal recruits planting them all in the same lane oh they would wreck the tower so hard going off of that same logic he lightning the, the cannon cart there he's planting it down and makes them spawn in the back this is a three crown victory you could pull this off in a real game if they lightning your cannon cart going off the same note of abusing placements of buildings you could actually glitch out the expo to spawn on the top of the map right there as you try and place the cannon in the expo there's nowhere to place it so it goes to the top corner that is so satisfying that's that's a backdoor expo if I ever saw one. This one's a bit more tame. The golem wants to go to the princess tower, but down to the cannon, but up to the princess tower. The princess is actually shredding the golem slowly, but surely. I almost feel like it would have been more beneficial to place the cannon cart four tiles in the river anyways. The princess isn't dealing enough damage without that cannon. Seven times elixir made the game really enjoyable, but so did the one card glitch. It's funny how that the best things about Clash Royale for 2020 weren't the updates. It wasn't Clown Wars 2. It was the seven times mode. It was one card glitch. New ways to play the game really brought me joy. And how you did this, the first way to do it, you'd have to make a specific deck, hold down the five and then switch it up and then hit party. And then you'd enter in with a friend and it would make this really weird flashing glitch. But here's the thing with the one card glitch. It could be zero cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you entered with zero cards, you would actually mess up your partner too. And your partner would have no cards as well. There's literally nothing you could do in this situation. And your teammate would wouldn't even know about it because they didn't know you were doing the zero card glitch on them you literally can't play anything you have nothing to spend elixir on giant there is probably a little bit mad <laughs> he's got no cards he's probably this is probably the first time it happened to him and he's like what the heck is going on <laughs> that's the three crown there's nothing you could have done and here was something weird if you did the one card glitch but you omitted the first slot you would still only have one card but this would actually crash the game if you played that one card. Interesting. Another thing to note too, is that this was abusable in Classic Challenge since way back in September, and it, it got patched around December. You could actually enter the Classics. Here it is in a Classic Challenge with only Battle Healer. It's not double elixir, so you can't really do anything too, too crazy. You could kind of, there's three battle healers. This is before they had the float mechanic, so you had to put them down at the bridge. That baby dragon, fisherman, musketeer, they're all wrecking the battle healer. Let's fast forward this a little bit. All right, now it's double elixir. You have a ton of battle healers. This is a classic challenge, a real challenge that someone spent gems on. This is, this is so illegal. They're going to win with only battle healers. I would be so mad. You have 10 battle healers on the map. It's just a heal fest right now. This is so satisfying. Oh. So the original way to do this was in 2v2s. And if you brought mirrors, you would have mirror that you can use. And every time you use mirror, it goes plus one elixir. So now the skeletons are at three elixir. And now it's going to cost four elixir. And then when the mirror comes, you guessed it. Five elixir. This went all the way to the end. If you used that 10 times in a row, the mirror would end up costing 10 elixir for one elixir skeletons. The most expensive in the game. What's interesting is that there's a different method to get this to work in 1v1s as well. This is probably very likely the world record for the longest king activation tower in the world with the electro spirit. With the miner goes boom, 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 boom. Oh, the second miner. You definitely need this. 
one card glitch to use a, bring the three cards. There were some pretty satisfying things you could do too if you wanted to utilize the Electro Spirit to hit all nine targets. Though this is Bug Royale Rewind 2020, it still worked in war. The randomized button, if you check some of my previous videos, you can actually have duplicate cards. It's not quite the one card glitch, but it's the multi-card glitch. If you have less than 32 cards in your deck, you can't build four full war decks. So then you hit the randomize button and it just gives you the same duplicate cards over and over and over. So in this case, because his last card was cannons spam infinite cannons and it just keeps going on and on why defend mega minion and minions with regular cards when you can defend it with cannon <laughs> win condition cannon this one was a bit more tame but when they introduced the float mechanic and the battle healer and the royal ghost it would actually push air units up too so the balloon would connect a little bit faster as well as the inferno dragon this one this one is insanely dangerous that extra two seconds that it buys, your tower is done. This one is an interesting one. It's not very practical like the one card glitch. You would never want to pull this off in a real game, but you could stack cards. It basically works with any building in the center. It could be mortar, it could be a dragon egg or anything else. Because of the way it forced the pathing of the skeleton bear, I, I don't know. don't know what caused this one exactly, but it's something to do with the building in the middle. You, if you cloned it, you could actually s produce more units in there. And once you got a certain amount of skeletons stuck in that one little crevice, that one little nook and cranny, you could actually stick other units in there. Princes, elixir golems, anything, you name it. Look, it's just chilling. It's grooving right now. That elixir golem is just waiting to be released. Oh, it looks like he's stacking Electro Spirits in there too. This is a very lengthy process to pull this off. I don't know how many Electro Spirits are in there, but I know there's going to be a grand finale something somewhere in here. Oh, here it is. It's going to be a Skarmy explosion. That is a satisfying Forked Lightning. You could do this with Mother Witch as well. A cloned Mother Witch would produce regular piglets, but... A mother witch hitting clone skeletons or clone units produces a clone piglet. That's a bug itself, in my opinion. That's worse than the stack glitch bug. Same thing. You just have to clone the princes on top. You could place any units in these nooks and crannies. This looks pretty satisfying. <laughs> but with skeletons, that was a lot of skeletons that they stacked in there. And they unleashed it with clone spell. It's like if you spill juice in your house and the ants just come and come. Somebody stomped that ant hill. This one's a bit more tame and I think it's still in the game, but you could hop the river with a clone spell if you push the elixir golem on top. This one has been in the game for a long time, but it extends the length of damage when the bomb tower explodes. This could activate the king tower if you had a bomb tower in front of the king tower and someone hit it as it destroyed. Electro Giant was insanely bugged. Not only was the zap not level 13, it was level 9. That's a completely different glitch, not a fun one. Upon release, he did kill the hunter in one hit, so they fixed that. But when they fixed that, they introduced a plethora of different glitches. Lightning on the Electro Giant actually crashed the game. It basically counts as a draw, but it's not even in the logs anymore. Stacking Expo and Mortar, that's that's dirty. This one was interesting. This was one of the biggest game-breaking glitches of 2020. It wasn't like a stacking glitch that you have to specifically go left, right, up, down, summon one skeleton, clone spell on the right side, and put 11 elixir collectors down. This one was a viable win condition. You would stack the buildings and then put down royal recruits. They have nowhere to spawn. They'll spawn in the top left. Instant win. Seven elixir. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Top left deployment. <laughs> Let's go. It's double elixir. This is the end game now. Okay. I've got furnace. They've got to be confused about what's going on. Shoot. No, 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 no. Not like this. Okay. I blocked it. <laughs> that was one of my favorite glitches. Going back to the stacking glitch, imagine stacking infinite night witches. This 
obviously isn't a real game. It's a friendly game. But if this was a real game, that'd be kind of satisfying if you can keep your Night Witches alive. Mew compiled a bunch of bugs and inconsistencies. These ones are more technical and they're not as fun. So Cannon and Cannon Cart share the same stats, but I think she's trying to portray that the Cannon Cart attacks a little bit faster whereas the cannon's gonna attack a little bit slower this has more to do with load time it's a hidden stat that's not in the stats menu here's a weird one though with the valkyrie she wouldn't splash a ghost that's invisible that's heckin illegal another one the hunter's bullets are asymmetrical three on the left four on the right three on the left and four on the right again so on the left and the right king tower it's different Tornado's crown tower damage doesn't reflect the real stats in game right now as well. And the logs hitbox extends the hit because of the bomb. Same thing happens with the barbarian barrel activates the king tower. That's that's pretty satisfying. Here's an unfair interaction where the electro wizard wins. It was exactly one to one. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for coming and for using code OJ. 2020 has been a weird year. But with the one card glitch, seven times elixir, it made Clash Royale better. I have one more piece to send off this video. It's going to be satisfying ASMR of Healer Symphony.